We begin with man and woman. Two groups. More importantly, two broad ideas, sketched out in vague detail by someone else a long time ago. We begin with a dichotomy. Two groups, sometimes with no discernible boundary between them, and yet in some cases, separated by a world of difference. In every semblance of that dichotomy, we see otherness. Ourselves on one side, someone else on the other. Those of us to whom man has been assigned look beyond our unique position on one side of the fence, and in doing so, we recognize ourselves, or at least some of us, as the benefactors of a system shaped as a result of our concerns, our language, and largely geared towards upholding our status quo. A status quo which allows for others' most central concerns to go by the wayside. We value those privileges. We hold tight to them because they afford us things we can't remember not having. But of all those privileges, we find self-creation to be the most important. We find that, in the best circumstances, many of us are afforded the ability to create ourselves, to find our own way in the world, to shape our destiny, to write our own story about the world, and consequently about who we want to be. But in that realization, we realize that not everyone is afforded that privilege. We see that for those women around us, mothers, sisters, daughters, that there exist so many obstacles to their own freely determined self-creation. That the boundaries of that space called woman is not merely the boundary between two groups of people. That those boundaries are effectively boundaries between individual selves. Rather than any doctrine of natural human rights, or any other one based on what is fundamentally human or God-given, we see self-creation as the most important right one can be afforded. We understand that because we understand that the ways in which we behave in the world are usually the result of the stories we've been telling rather than anything intrinsic to us. To create a new self is to create a new story, and we revere and respect those women who effectively rewrote our collective story by living out their own. We see from their example that the lines are pliable and the barriers breakable. We understand with a cautious optimism that breaking barriers is not simply a matter of changing stories or vocabularies. But we also understand that those who refuse categorization effectively break down both. We see the idea of essence as damaging, as a basis to claim that the truth of those boundaries lies out there rather than in the way we talk about it. We take it upon ourselves to strip away what is inessential for man and for women, to speak in new ways, and to break down and stretch out every barrier we decide we don't need. Traditional definitions are okay, and so are new ones, provided they're freely chosen. As men, we drop other privileges willingly, in the interest of finding a space where individuals on both sides can become what they want to be. We as men overcome man, by allowing women to overcome women. We collect as communities and groups for the purpose of letting those differences between individuals speak. Most importantly, we take on the challenge posed to us by history, by those examples we respect. We write new stories, and in doing so, we become something new.